And that is the Dyson Sphere Hold Base. And if you know what a Dyson Sphere is, well, obviously you know from the wiki that it's a hypothetical megastructure that completely encompasses a star and captures a large percentage of its power output, which is nothing, nothing like this base build at all, except that it's vaguely spherical shape in some angles, maybe, and... Yeah, anyway, so why am I calling the, the Dyson Sphere? Well, the basic idea for this space actually came from a guy called Dyson, I believe, which was close enough to Dyson. And I wanted to sort of do my take on how I would build this and sort of uh, in my way, in my fashion, with my kind of trap build and trap setup. And of course, I can't call it the Dyson base because, you know, it's his name, right? So it's going to be the Dyson Sphere the Hold Base or something like that. I will be leaving a link in the description below to his base build. And I have to say it's a, it's a really nice compact way to get into your base which has a lot of the features of other bases that I've done but I've never done something that was exactly like this but you know it's it's got the ramp down it's got a lot of da dart traps it's got electric fences and nicely it's got a vault hatch in the middle so you can actually get in and out just don't uh, turn on the electric fences uh, before you get down because that will be painful. So we're going to start with building this, the structure, the, the placement of the trap, all the electricity stuff, how to hook it up and uh, how it's used. I'll test it with some zombies and of course we're going to have a nice big hold coming in as well to see how it functions. And if you like this base build, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you're on Twitter, why not give me a follow there, twitter.com slash 42 and come hang out in my Discord. And of course, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. And I would definitely love to hear your commentary in the discussion box below. Of course, we are starting this with a ramp down. And then we make this a uh, 3x3 three three area here that we're going to dig out a little bit. Right, I've been digging my hole here. And as we come down, this is a little bit of the tricky part. Um, I am going to do something similar to my underground safe entry ramp where i basically staggered these ones with the arrow arrow slits and on top of the arrow slits i had some plates but this basically allows you to well walk in and out you can come in you can come out but it also um it ensures that you have a too high dart trap defense behind so you get a lot of darts being shot out which really helps to decimate the zombies so this is what i'm doing and that means that on the sides i'm gonna put in let me do this the correct way this way i'm gonna have two here and two here actually three and uh Likewise, let me see on this side, need to have a bit more space. I'm going to put in just as a pillar here for now and something like this. And of course, we will be having a pillar here as well. Let's build up this pillar and all the way up, really all the way up. Uh, yep, it's correct. And yep, so basically it's going to be three wide on each side with uh, lots of arrow slits. Now, of course, you can turn this whichever way you want to have. I'm just going to do it like this because it allows you to sort of have a better visibility out from sort of from the side when you're standing, let's say you're standing out here or something. All right, then we're going to have the actual platform and this is where everything is going to be resting on. And this is where the zombies will be standing as they come down here. So we're going to leave a smaller hole in the middle because obviously we want to put our well, our way in and out. And let's say we have a ladder. So let's make sure we put a ladder down here. One way in. Let's get, get a hatch. Um, having it upgraded is probably a good idea because it's going to take some pounding from the zombies theoretically. This is basically the way in and out. So, oh, missed out one. Patch that hole. You see here, it's uh, basically just a nice ramp down. And this is using the wedges and the wedge tips. I put in an opening here because all the zombies will be walking past here. They might not necessarily step here because they could run all the way down. But if they do step here, then they will be electrocuted. And you can have dart traps behind that are shooting at them and sort of just giving them that first tap before they come down and they get subjected to all the other dart traps that are going to be here. I'm going to take out this one as well. 
make sure we have uh, even more traps here and we are going to let's do this and we're going to do this we are going to keep this one open um, because i want to have somewhere that i can stand myself and shoot as they come in or maybe a fight melee or something so we're going to keep this one open so it's not going to be quite fully symmetrical and you might wonder about this one shooting you and yes this could also shoot at you so we're going to see if we can do something about that otherwise we'll just remove this one so we don't have anything shooting us in the face and actually in the legs as well hmm let me think about that okay a little bit of a progress report to see everything is nicely painted you come down here and you have obviously the dark traps are going to be behind here you have the vault hatch that we can hopefully go down through let's close it small little corridor come up here through the main area and of course i have this one open because i'm going to connect things so make sure you don't close everything off have a look at the whole video so you can see how things are because it can be a bit of a pain to connect it if everything is closed off um, have a way around here for anything, all the dark traps and everything on the back. And let's have a look at how you wire everything up. And it's going to be reasonably straightforward once you sort of got one piece in. So let's get uh, one of the dart traps in. I think it's this way. Two dart traps. Yep, they're firing across here. Very important. We're also going to have a, a trip wire. And then right behind that, we're going to have the electric fence, right? Makes sense and we're going to do the same thing on this side except we're going to put see that's correct this one here trip wire and let's take this one out and put a block uh, below because it doesn't want to go down okay correct so now we have this done so we have the dot trap trip bar electric fence so how do you wire these things up? Obviously you need to have an electric source and I'm gonna do that later, but I'm gonna show you, let's assume you have an electric source behind to a switch and the switch goes to the tripwire. Really important because the tripwire is the one that decides whether it actually starts shooting or operating. So you connect from the tripwire over to here and make sure that this is not red. If this is red, you can connect as long as it's black or gray, it would work. Connect. So you see this one is now connected across. This one then connects to dot trap. It also connects to the dot trap. Important. Finally, these dot trap, depending on how you want to do it, but the easy way is simply to have one of the dot traps connects to the dot trap here. So now this one goes across and then you have this dot trap connect up to this one so that all four of them are connected. So now this means that if there's power, the trip bar is triggered, then the dot traps will shoot. Now you also want to have the electric fence because this one is really important for standing the zombies. So we do from the trip bar post, and this is the second trip bar post, not from the first, really important. We go to this electric fence. We call that electric fence two because it's on the same side as the trip bar post two. And this one, you then connect across to this one. This means that trip bar gets triggered, which means that the dot traps fire and the electric fence also starts firing. So bzz, you get killed or they get killed by these dot traps. Really important. So now we have this lane completed. So I'm going to connect the same thing on uh, these two lanes. And, but what about the back and forth? Well, let me do that one as well to show how that works. It's pretty much, much identical, but let me do it anyway. So um can be a little bit of a pain let me see if i get that one in correctly and i think i got it correctly let's have a look from this side yeah so this one actually i might be yeah i might be able to place it here and did i get it correctly here no i did not so it can be a little bit of a pain to place let me see if i do a copy rotation i might get it in yes and Yes, so these ones are all connected. Nice. And we're going to do the same thing there. But first, let's uh, place one here. And let me show you how to make this side. These two here. Again, behind here, we have the tripwire. Go down one. Put the electric fence like this. And on this side behind here, um, we're going to put in the bar and this is this one yes Repair. break this down and uh, have an electric fence right so this will relate to this one i'm going to get some more dart traps as well dart trap 
which are then going to be put in here. And let me do that from the outside. Uh, let's see here. We're going to put. Let's turn it. Yes. OK, so that's correct. So we have this one as well. So we have this and this. They're just slightly staggered because of the sort of uh, trap walkway. Uh, but the same thing basically works. Uh, it's just that it's offset one uh, in this direction. And let's see. We have then and uh, let's do do this you probably won't have a relay so it looks nice so i'm just going to showcase again same thing here you go to the tripwire post tripwire post then goes to this tripwire post yep see it's still black so we are pretty good with the distance same thing here this tripwire post goes through the dot traps this one goes through the dot traps perfect and this dot trap goes to let's say the bottom one bottom one goes to the top one all good you can see it's all nicely connected and then we do the same thing here we go from the trip bar post 2 to the electric fence 2 electric fence 2 goes over to this side and am i yep now i'm red okay so now i'm in a bad place here so, because i can't actually see it that's part of the problem when you're doing some of these because the wires can be fairly long so let me see if i can get it this way Connected here. Yep. That works. And of course, it means that I have to replace this one, which is a little bit painful. But I mean, this one is not necessarily needed. I can take this one out anyway, because it's just the corner. I just wanted to have it because it looks a little bit better. And uh, that means that now we have the electric fence is also working here. Trip wire gets tripped. All the dot traps are functioning. And the electric fence will also be busting the zombies. And I can do the same thing while this one. I'm going to think about how to do this one because this one would shoot me in the face, which obviously we don't want to have. But I'm going to connect the rest of them, all of the ones on the side, and get that done. And uh, just to complicate things a little bit, I realized that actually with these three electric fences, we are covering the hole here. So we're actually going to remove this last one. We don't need this one. Why? Well, there's no point in having crisscrossing in all directions because they, the zombies can only be affected by one of the electric fences so that saves us a little bit of space i'm going to take this one out again so don't put it in <laughs> but this one basically just do the dot traps that is going to be enough right so no electric fences back and forth here we just have it side to side and it makes it a little bit easier because it means that we have more space here to play around with we've gotten a lot of the things hooked up now everything except this middle lane and i was thinking how do I do this one best? Because I do want to have the dot traps here because if we're going to stand here, uh, zombies might be preferring to be here in the middle. And if we don't have anyone shooting here except from the side, we're sort of limiting ourselves. So what I think I'm going to try, I'm going to try first, I'm going to have, this going to be a reinforced uh, concrete plate. I probably would have done it still, but let's start with, uh, with just a reinforced plate. Let's do it like, like this. Uh, this will protect us from the one shooting at the back, right? Which means that if this one is shooting, it's going to hit the plate, which means it's not going to hit us in the legs, which means we don't take damage. But how do we do? Well, we have still have this one, which uh, we could remove. But I think, and I'm going to try this out, that if you put one of these, one, this one, if you put one of the steel, well, the steel or reinforced concrete poles here, and it's the one in the middle, I believe because it's literal in the middle, the dart from the other side will be hitting it and not us. And because this hole is just one, one, uh, one, one high, the zombies will not be able to get in so that they can avoid the traps here because we have the steel plate here. And I think this is going to work pretty well because this gives us a way to uh, to shoot we could stand here and shoot and i could even bring this down a little bit if i wanted but at least we have a reasonably good view view here and at the same time um the zombies will be hit oh oh is that because i'm in god mode well that is really interesting you can actually Oh, this is really interesting. You can actually sneak in underneath the pole. So I'm inside the pole. Look at it. Look at how it pops. I pop down. 
Actually, this is even better because we, we can probably... Yeah, we can stand here and if I want to... Let's see, where's my sledgehammer? Oh, yeah. Let's take it. Oh, this works really well. I'm actually literally... I'm, I'm popping into it because I'm crouching. Oh, this is it. This is nice. And not necessarily what I want to have though, but you know, it would work. We are going to put uh, this one here though. And I can still, I, I can still go here on this side. I do have a fairly good view and I think I can swing. Oh yeah, I can. So we're going to connect uh, this one as well. So let's do that. This switch is going to take a lot of stuff to this one. This one over to, if we can get in here. Yep to this one and uh oh now it's on the wrong side uh it doesn't really matter i suppose we can let's just bring it back here as well to this one and this one to this one so now they're all hooked up and i think because i might be able to you can definitely sit here and i think you can actually be right here and have a good view to attack melee if you really want to or you can actually just stand and shoot you have a pretty good view here of things coming in uh you're probably going to get some vomit though which uh, might hit the dot trap but at least you could or you can just stand back here and if you want to or you know something like this to get headshots i think that will work so let me um well, everything has been hooked up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to load all these up with some dart traps. I'm going to hook up some uh, generator as well. And uh, we'll spawn in some zombies. And I'm going to paint this side here as well. This one is missing. This is really annoying me. <laughs> and uh, then we'll spawn in some zombie just to test it out to see if it's really working. And here you have it. The Dyson Sphere Base. Yes, I know this is not really a sphere. It's sort of square with rounded whatever but anyway i'm sure you could make a really nice sphere kind of thing here but i'm not going to take all that time to get that done not as important as showing off the base so i have uh, concreted over this whole area because that means that they are even less likely to take down and it just makes also means that you have a nice uh, clean space up here and uh, you go down open up Jump down, and I have not painted that one. Let's quickly get that one painted. Uh, you go down. Of course, you want to make sure that everything is turned off before you go in and out. Otherwise, uh, you'll get killed. And now I'm stuck here. Okay, let's go up here. Fortunately, I'm in God mode. Got that I have everything turned on. Uh, let's switch that off. So, everything is nicely connected. One tip when you're building this, when you're making this for real and not just testing like I am, um, I would suggest that you, uh, for one, you connect the sides, top sides to one switch and all the bottom to another switch and then the back and forth to a third switch. The reason being is that if it's a horde, you might want to have uh, all of these one working, especially if it's a large horde, if you have a lot of concurrent, but just during the normal gameplay, having all these trap which means you have six per side except for here so you have six 12 18 22 traps uh functioning is overkill because if zombies run in here they might trigger multiple of these trip bars and you might be shooting off i don't know 20 darts just to kill one zombie overkill you generally just need the top ones per lane and it should be enough to kill the zombies without well just the wandering zombies without taking uh, dealing too much damage but uh, for horde knight you want to might want to have all of them running it could even be overkill if you only have eight concurrent so as you can see i have uh, spawned in a couple of uh, feral bikers up there and we're gonna see if we can get yep seeing it go running down here and you see they get to uh, trigger the electric fences, get stunned, and they run up here. Oh, they actually died. I think they might have done just a little bit of damage to, you see, tool. Let's get the nail gun here. They might have even taken one swing. Oh, they took one swing at this one. Oh, that's interesting. I guess you need to repair it sometimes. Uh, we did not get hit in the face, which is really important. So let me, and that was two. They melted really fast. Let's, uh melt a few more and just an easy way to see if the traps are working just have a look at them if it's draining the darts when the zombies come in you know that they are functioning this one they might not have triggered so that's fine but at least you can see these ones they're all 
have used up a couple dodge, not this one because they weren't on the right side. But after you have a few of the zombies coming in, if you have any of the dart traps that never lose any of the, uh, the ammo, then you probably have not wired them up the correct way and then you might want to recheck that. You see here, we have a bunch of the feral cheerleaders that I'm going to start off here. They're wondering, they don't know about me. As I shoot one here, they should be coming here and some of them fall down. Some of them run here. I think they get stuck here. This opening might be a little bit too small. It doesn't really matter. It just means it's going to break. But you see they run down here and they... Uh, this was 25 and uh, too many of them means that they're having a little bit of problem getting down here. Some of them are getting lost. These ones decide to they want to go here for some reason. They will generally go down here, but the more you have, the more likely they are to go somewhere else. You see, all of them are just melting, and look at that experience. And if you saw, the darts are actually firing here in the middle, and I'm not taking any damage. Of course, I'm in god mode because, well, I forgot to turn that off. Let's get some bows, and we have uh, 25 of them. Let's uh, shoot a little bit. I'm no longer in god mode, so if the darts hit me in the face, I will take damage. And it looks like they are trying to get through here. Maybe there's some opening here that uh, I haven't fully gotten rid of. I can check. Oh yeah, I do potentially. So that's one of the reasons uh, that you want to have a bit of a look at all this. You might want to make sure you strengthen some of this. Because if they decide that this path is more challenging than this path, they might actually decide they're just going to shoot here. And especially since he doesn't know about me, he definitely... Okay, now is coming down. Okay, so I'm going to have to just uh, patch all this up and maybe steal it up because I think some of them decide that they want to go in here and then go down into the base rather than going down through here. And I think partially because this is also the steel one. Maybe I'll uh, reduce that one to be reinforced concrete so it makes it a little bit easier for the zombie to get through. But you can see it works really well. And let me see, can I even do any looting here? I can, actually. That's interesting. So... I actually can loot, I believe, pretty much everything here. Oh, I wasn't actually counting on that. That's really nice, though. It means that you can loot as the zombie horde is here as well. Nice. Oh, some cash. Never say no to cash. And this one I can get as well. Oh, that's really nice. Maybe if it lands right in front of, of the plate, that will be an issue. But uh, we could actually solve that by... Let's do this. Uh, let's do... I'm going to really change that one, but let me change this one to just a concrete pole. Let's do advanced, just so we get a little bit of better uh, to do some looting here. And if I put it here, then they could stand on it. Potentially, they might actually stand on it. Mm, okay, now we're gonna we're gonna put back the the plate actually because they're less likely to stand on it. If you put a pole, it's definitely wide enough for them to stand on, I believe. So uh, let's just save and keep it like this for now. Oh, how exciting! We're now game stage five to five because it's day three seventy eight, uh, and we're gonna get a horde in here that is uh, twenty four concurrent zombies. Let's see where they spawn from. They're spawning from anywhere. Yep. There they are. Coming in from the left side, which is fine. They should be going down, running down. Yep. Getting uh, hit by the dart traps. And you see there they are as well. One thing I realized, I forgot to connect the dart traps here in the front. But all right. I think some of them would have definitely been triggering anyway. But, you know, it's something I can add on later on. Now you see a problem with having too many concurrent zombies. If they're standing on top of each other, it's a bit of an issue because they will be doing damage to the side here as well. Uh, I think he's actually possibly attacking me behind there. Let me see if I get out of the god mode here, see if I'm taking any damage. So if you have 24 concurrent zombies, uh, you might want to make it 4x4 actually. Or even potentially 5x5. Five five. Uh, if it is too small, they will definitely be standing. You see, he's standing on top of him and then he doesn't take damage from the dart traps. Um, it's unavoidable. Uh, that's how the physics work. I wish that they would sort of, if they're on top of it, they would sort of fall down and, you know, because there's space over here. But, uh, you know, it's working really well. See, I'm taking a little bit of damage. Let me see if I go down. Oh, because he is definitely vomiting. 
Taking a little bit of damage, but not really too bad. Uh, I can definitely stand here and shoot if I want to. To take out some of these zombies. We have a really good view, actually surprisingly good uh, view of the zombies here. Because it's literally in their heads. So if you have the skills to pop their heads, that actually works really well. Most of them will not be dealing a lot of damage. They, they do a little bit of damage here in between being bust and hit by the, the darts. Um, all of these should be firing. Yeah, you see definitely if they're firing. And standing here, see they are taking out some of this. That it's going to be unavoidable when you have such a high game stage. They all actually want to go to this location. If you have two new four, you do have that problem because they want to get through here. Yep. I mean, I can definitely repair it. A little bit annoying if you have to do that meanwhile during the horde. But it is what it is. You can't avoid it when you have so little space. Let's see if I get in. Yeah, I can. Oh, I can probably see if I can. Oh, am I taking? Oh. I can, yeah, so I can actually stand here and uh, do melee. It actually works. We'll stand here and uh, do melee. It actually works reasonably well. To sort of help to thin them out. Oh, okay, that's not... Okay, let's get a first aid kit here. <laughs> uh, one of the cops exploded. Let's uh, heal up a little bit. We don't want to die. So if this was just eight, I don't think we would have any issue with all these stapling on each other, because that is doing some damage to here. Um, but what can you do when you want to test out? It does work, but you want to make sure you don't have uh, too many zombies when your your base doesn't have the capacity to handle it. And I think one of the worst thing is really when they're standing on top of each other, because you notice all the traps here are meant to fire across. And if they're not standing across, I mean, they're standing one up, they're not taking any damage. So this one, oh, definitely working fine. And you can stand here and just help them out. If I just stand here and help them out, I don't think there will be any issue because I'll be able to help take them out so that they don't stand on top of each other too much. And of course, it's a really good experience as well. And if you have uh, really maxed out your machine gun or your whatever rifle you have, pistol, Magnum, so you actually do a lot of uh, headshots and head decap, then that really helps as well because one or two shots and you take them out. Because you don't want to waste the time go full auto, you could, but that just wastes a lot of the ammo. Look at that, all of these corpses that are here, and look at all these drop loot bags as well. If it was just a concurrent, it wouldn't be an issue. Oh, they broke through here. This one doesn't matter. This one, I mean, it doesn't matter because I've doubled up here. But they will eventually get through here because they're standing on top of each other. I could probably solve that by dropping them in the middle. Um, but if you're making a 4x4, then that's a lot easier. Uh, oh, now, okay, now I have a bit of an issue because they took out this one. That is definitely a problem. So, yeah, don't have too many of them because <laughs> the traps can't take care of them fast enough. And if they stand on top of each other, you're going to have damage here. So, yeah, just something to keep in mind. Too many of them is an issue. All right. Overall, I think it worked really well. You do have the issue with too many zombies. And uh, if I just did eight, shouldn't it be an issue at all? Let me just quickly do that before we close out. Let me just stop this. Hold on, people. And we're back again for a small little horde here. And there's going to be eight concurrent, uh, which is a little bit more in line with what a three by three can handle. And I've made a couple of small changes. I have uh, put a couple of uh, small ramp block here so that they will, well, tips, wedge tips, so they'll fall down easier. And uh, having just eight means that they should not be standing on top of each other as much as they did before because they should come down and they should die fast enough that that's less of an issue. So you see there's quite a bit of the raided ones coming in. Probably a lot of ferals as well. And at some point maybe the demolishers. But if you look, even with the cops, which have quite a lot of health points, you have the whites, which also have a lot of health points. And the raided bikers, they just die so fast. So they do have a little bit of a chance to, to attack here. But it's really, really minimal. I mean, it's a little bit here and there. 
and because there's not so many uh, that are blocking the way here you would have a less of them actually trying to bash here or trying to dig down because they can't get in so for eight concurrent this works a lot better at this size as you can see they just sort of trickle in few at a time and the traps have no issue with taking care of them and uh, this is a little bit more what you would have if you're just playing the game just on regular settings and if i look here there's a little bit of damage, not a lot. I mean, that's 80 damage, not very much. It's a little bit more here. And uh, you could still stand here and shoot. You will take some damage on these ones. I don't think I repair them fully uh, just to keep them working. But I don't think this should be any issue at all. And it also makes it a little bit easier if you want to stand here and do some shooting. Just make sure he doesn't. Oh, he now wants to go there. But that's all right. We can shoot him. And he died. Because you have a really good view here. And I think he got off one attack. And that's it. And now they all come in here. But even with eight. No. Really no issues. See they die so fast. And we can just see the, the experience. Coming in here as they die. Because I have the advanced engineering perk. No issue whatsoever. I think. Oh he came in here. I think he glitched in just a little bit enough to, to attack me. But see this works a lot better. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, Dyson Sphere Horde based, based on Dyson's uh, concept with having a 3x3 with a vault hatched in the bottom so you can get in and out. And in normal terms, it, it is a, a pit trap, but it's a pit trap that you're actually going into yourself, so you don't ha need to have a separate entrance. Uh, it has some similarities to my safe entryway base where I basically had this kind of way down as well and I had a corridor with traps except I used a lot more of the blade traps and the blade traps unfortunately are a problem against the demolishers. Dark traps are not. Dark traps will not set off the demolishers. So this works really well and of course you go in and out through the central hatch there and uh, you can stand there through horde, do some shooting, do some bashing and collect all the experience and of course you can loot throughout the horde night as well. So what do you think? Would you make something like this as an entryway to your underground base? Or what is your preferred way of securing your underground base? Let me know in the comment section below. And of course, hopefully I earned your subscription, so ring that notification bell as well. And I'll see you next time. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the vetted community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.